of Darwin, but are they in one piece? Let's find out now with Hamish and Andy. <laughs> And boys, you made it. We have. We're here. We have yeah. made it. And, uh, and not just us, Rove, all the people travelling with us, our Carapanians. The Carapanians, we've been crossing to them all week. There we go. We just told them they were in Darwin then. And that is the sort of reaction that you can expect. Feel the bother on the Gold Coast. But, no, no, we're here. Well, how do you feel now that you've made it to the finish line? It was pretty oh. emotional, I think. Um, a mixture, you know, a real mixed bag for me, yeah, sadness. A little bit of nostalgia. Mm. I just wish there was some way that we could relive the last two weeks. Yeah, I didn't you take know. any photos, though. Yeah, so. I know. I, I only had this bloke following us around with a camera, oh. so... Wait a second. <laughs> That's exactly how we should relive the last two weeks. <laughs> Let's take you back straight away to Melbourne, where this whole thing started. Who dares Darwin's The Caravan of Courage two weeks ago? That's right, we were back in the van, this time hugging Australia from bottom to top, and it all started in Melbourne 14 days ago. First morning, I don't think uh, Burke kept Wills waiting, but uh, Hamish kept me waiting, which is no good. He must be doing something important, though. Well, I forgot to get my stuff out of the washing machine. <laughs> it goes in the bag. I've just discussed this with Hamish. I think it's bad luck to christen something twice. Well, we'll be all right. Oh! Oh! <laughs> In hindsight, I think it was loss of blood that was affecting my navigational skills. Have you worked it out yet? It's a, much, it's a different model. We'll put it down there. We've got to get, get to Darwin. Oh, okay, we'll just guess. Yes, go this way then. <laughs> The first stop was nil, and the prospect of seeing a big thing had the car a buzz. Please don't get excited. Sometimes they're not as big as you think they're going to be. OK. OK, so even the size of a dog would be pretty oh, big. Oh, oh, oh! Jesus, look at it! It's a dog! It's a dog! It's a and that excitement was still around when we met Wimpy. We're going to go and have a look at some pretty special birds. Come on, let's get going. He bloody loved this rare bird called the Mallee Fowl. We've seen, we've seen the Mallee Fowl. <laughs> and was very enthusiastic to show us their mating rituals. Yeah, Bill goes into your chest and he goes, Mmm. God, I can put my legs behind my head. I hope that's not a turn off. <laughs> Neither of us had sex with the bird that night. As day one drew to a close, Hamish realised he hadn't even bought a sleeping bag. I might have to sleep in a gorilla suit. I'm pretty comfy down here just in a normal sleeping bag, which I bought because we were told to bring them. But how's your gorilla suit going? <laughs> We continued on to Williamstown, the home of Roz's goat stud. Well, there's the stud. And we decided to have an old-fashioned milk off with the loser having to suck on a goat's teeth. <laughs> that is pathetic. Calcium, we pressed on. My navigator still struggling with his only job. Right, you okay, Ham? Come on, Ham. Uh, Shit, Ham. Hamish, right or left? Right. It was left. <laughs> to the town of Porker and Sheep Country. Here with Barney and Tyson and a million flies. Yeah. yeah. Which means there must be sheep nearby. As the sheep received their summer trim, I thought of someone else that could use Barney's help. Well, the, the thing is, you were heading into hotter territory. You know, you'll need to lose some of your first. I don't think this is a very fair punishment for bringing a gorilla suit. I actually thought the gorilla suit was a good idea. Yeah. And I thought this was a good idea. <laughs> It's like the waiting room at the hairdressers. I'm sure they'll be with us in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what's the monkey's head? Oh, my hair! What's going on there? I've got to say, this is not what my parents expected when they sent me to an expensive school. <laughs> we continued north where Andy made good use of the giant gum tree and we met an 82-year-old DJ. 
happen as the red centre approached, so did killer dingoes, and we needed protection. Enter Ben, a dingo trapper who knew how to make the perfect concoction to lure the desert dogs. Uh, it's everything fox. So first of all, you take out the bum hole, the anal glands, the bladder, oh, turn it into a jam, that's, um, and that's what you got. That Just take the lid. <laughs> it seemed Hayne was more intent on getting me than the dog. Come on, Andy! Don't be a baby! It's just Fox Ain't a player. And in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, I decided it was to be the H-dog who would end up eating the dog's ass. <laughs> so, like I said, it's just a little bit of the bum hole. Oh, yeah. The anal glands and some urine. Oh. You'll have a good wash, but there'll still be faint traces for about 24 hours. <laughs> you son of a bitch, I am. Maybe I am, but Ben was worse. Really laying into you while you were down, mate. Oh. <laughs> I am not having fun! Yeah, well, everyone else was, mate. And considering we were less than halfway there, it was pretty clear there was much more fun to be had. That is just at the halfway mark. Looking good so far. We'll be back with part two after the break of Caravan of Courage 2. Don't go away. Welcome back, Rob Schlott. In just a sec, but first let's cross back to Darwin. Hamish and Andy, take us through. We're at the halfway point of your look back at Caravan of Courage 2. Oh, sorry. Uh, just and Andy. Yeah, uh, sorry. We have poorly timed this. Hamish tried to do a bit of a beer run during the ad break. <laughs> and he's in yeah. The yes. <laughs> Only one left, but that's all right. I got back in time. You're guilty. Well, I'll get yeah. that one. No, no. No drinking drive. Part two. <laughs> As we made our way from the crutch of Australia into the guts, it was the town of Coobapedi where our riches lay. Gold! No, opals. Oh. And a bloke called Jordan who knew how to get them. What's your role here, Jordan? Make explosives? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Blowing things up. We need two, two bombs. This is uh, not the type of rolled-up newspaper you want your dog to go and collect. Literally hundreds of centimetres below the earth, Jordan shoved his exploding newspapers into the wall. All right, Jordan, let it rip. As it turned out, we had to be a bit further away than that. Ooh, no, no, get, out get out of here. No, I've got it. <laughs> I'll go back and check. No, <laughs> What's this? That's a vein of dopamine. It's eyeball? Yes. Yeah. That's eyeball? Yeah, but the We're rich! Skinny, okay. <laughs> We're rich! Bullshit! <laughs> We drove home into the most remote part of Australia. Who says they don't have electricity out here? And arrived in the town of Aileron. Famous for this statue, these nads, and this bloke's mouth. <laughs> no, I'm not a tight <laughs> It's <laughs> hot, the bits have been melt. Wake up, you <laughs> skin. <laughs> Well, how long do you reckon you could go without swimming? If you had to, for a bit, could you do a day? Oh, f off. <laughs> We then hit Wycliffe Well, the UFO capital of Australia, and met Russell, who really believed the truth was out there. Do you reckon aliens maybe had something to do with the formation? Probably built it, mate. Yeah. What do you think they yeah. built it for? Little entertainment area. I really <laughs> thought this is the spot. This is where they're going to land. Is, there is that one? Oh, it's a cloud. Yeah. Be for a second, right? If an alien came down and grabbed you, yes. would you go with him? Yeah, well, I mean, I'd, I'd be for that, yeah. just to see what, what they're about. It yeah. might be a good probing object. If it didn't hurt, I wouldn't mind helping them out. Taking a probe for mankind, that's the outback spirit. We hit Mataranka, where a bloke called Howdy told us of a fight he'd had with a three-metre local. And that was done by a crocodile? Yeah, done by a crocodile. What happened there? Crocodile. No, that's just where I'm here on the roof. <laughs> Even though he told us crocs in this river don't attack people, we decided to risk only one person to find out. One, two, three. <gasps> yes! Oh the one time God. I didn't go scissors! Yes! It can become aggressive and cause injury if disturbed. What, what, what kind of injury? Like a Chinese burn? <laughs> I think I'd probably hurt you a bit more than that. <laughs> God, you look tasty. You're like a giant human nugget. 
with a couple of drumsticks hanging on the side. Remember not to splash too much. That makes them really excited. Andy is swimming across. He's doing breaststroke, although foolishly he looks like a big frog. And I can see a log floating near you. Howdy. I was uh, shitting myself. I think we all do. That's why none of us swim here. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be alive, we've pushed through to our final destination. We've done it. We've achieved something that was... Hey, that's way too fast! Jeez! Uh -oh. <laughs> you were just seeing the aftermath of uh, the first Caravan of Courage crash. I'm shaking. This door won't open. I've titled the car. I've titled the car. I can't believe it. Then Hamish went through three stages of shock. Denial. At about this point here, we'll call this incident area A. Maybe we start freaking out, crying. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Tell Meg I love her. I kept my cool. Then pleading. Can I just say, Toyota Prados are the best vehicles you'll ever drive in the outback. Well, how come you please don't make me pay for anything? Then acceptance. Well, I forgive you. It made us realise we had visited some truly extraordinary landmarks and really connected with Australia's remarkable wildlife. Everywhere we visited, we found it nearly impossible to say goodbye, and we're sure they felt exactly the same. Cheers, mate. See you, slack shits. <laughs> Have a great night. You too. Well done to you and the Carapanians. Thank you very much. Hamish and Andy.